Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar. Um, welcome back for, for those who have, who have attended my previous webinar. And uh, I also welcome uh, the people who have uh, newly joined this webinar. So I'm going to touch base on a few of the basic uh, areas of Scrum at Scale and then also explain about uh, how the Scrum Master cycle works in, in within the Scrum at Scale framework. Um, so this is recorded, as Shruti mentioned, this will be recorded and you can also have a look at this on their YouTube channel. Um, so everything is available on Knowledge Hut's website. Um, so yes, uh, just a short note about me. Uh, my name is Mohammed Rauta. I've been in the IT industry for about 20 years and I've been doing um, working a lot of agile projects for the last uh, 12 to 15 years. Um, I'm a Scrum at Scale trainer. I'm also an agile coach. I uh, work for a few clients uh, through RATAC and other companies. Um, I've helped a lot of organizations in uh, agile transformation and also uh, in terms of uh, empowering teams and coaching them to reach their goals. Uh, I've also done a few um, short keynotes um, in uh, some of the Scrum gatherings and uh, done a lot of voluntary work for uh, Scrum Alliance in terms of re reviewing, um, reviewing some of the um, articles and, um, and also been uh, I've been working on a book uh, for the best agile articles 2018. So that's 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 the uh, that was published in 2019. And uh, and one one the other book was leading exponential change. It's a uh, audible uh, book that I would recommend you to have a look. It's it's quite uh, quite interesting. It talks about a lot of about leadership and how changes can happen. So I am. Um, uh, a certified agile leader as well so i work with leadership teams try and help them in transformation um and i'm also on my journey with the spc so um i work with all the frameworks various frameworks like nexus um scrum and scale um safe so i'm going to talk about a few of those challenges as well and what each framework offers you in this in this webinar right so we've got the rule books we've got the scrum guide and the Scrum at Scale guide. Now, Dr. Jeff Sutherland developed the Scrum at Scale based on the fundamental principles behind Scrum. And what is the fundamental principle behind Scrum? It is a complex adaptive system theory in the gaming theory and all his work in biology. So the whole, the entire idea of Scrum at Scale was to take the basis and the foundation of Scrum and then apply that across hundreds of teams. So it's just not one or 10 or 20, it's applying across multiple teams. And uh, in, remember, if, if you want to do a transformation and if you start introducing additional roles or uh, that is not as part of a Scrum, is not part of Scrum Guide, then it's going to slow down your implementation and also kind of cripple your transformation. Now, Scrum at scale is a scale-free architecture. So what I mean by scale-free is, it's uh, something like our uh, biological cell, you know, just what we have in our system. So, for example, the red blood cells, which performs different activities, but each one has its own speciality. So these cells, the components, they, they, they are similar to each other, but they can scale. So it's like internet. You can take about internet. Internet grows. Internet gets expanded. It doesn't, it doesn't break. So these architectures are seen everywhere in nature. You also uh, you can also see that in the chip design. So if you look at Intel, uh, in their chip design, what they've used is a scale-free architecture. So if you look at each component, each design, they all look similar. And why do we want this kind of an architecture when we scale? The reason is we want to achieve linear scalability and the business agility. By linear scalability, it is when you are trying to do some changes in your organization that should the change should also increase your delivery of your product now, for example if i'm increasing the number of teams my delivery of product should also increase it's as simple as that and that's what a scale-free architecture would allow you to do now if you've seen most of the frameworks around are quite prescriptive but scrum at scale is not prescriptive it suits your context if you have to kind of gauge what kind of environment what kind of culture and try and build your own transformation backlog. Now, every lot of companies have their own kind of culture and their context. There could be different kinds of types of culture going on there. So you have to assess that, do an assessment model, and think about what works well for your organization, what areas you want to focus on, what areas you want to kind of rectify first, and work on those things. Now, 
most of these scaling tools and methods they address dysfunctions why why do they address us to optimize the value delivery system of your organization uniquely now identifying and resolving th these dysfunctions allows a naturally incremental growth pattern that's what we need we want to have a natural growth pattern it should organically grow that's the key focus right so we want that kind of a tool that will help you to assess your model assess your environment and help you to scale organically now to do all this we need a guiding coalition most scaling frameworks talk about this and scum at scale also talks about and appreciates the guiding coalition now here if you look at this diagram here this is a book from this is a book uh, by uh, john p cotter it's called accelerate and in this he talks about the creating a dual operating system now when you do a transformation so one thing you got to remember is if you do a big bang approach or if you try and do an all at one transformation it's never going to succeed and we never recommend it it's always good to start off with a small set of teams we call that as a reference model and and then try and scale it across so that becomes a prototype for you now in any organization you can see that there is a mix of both there's a hierarchical system and when you start implementing a, a scaling framework you could have a network of teams and that's what we call as a scalable reference model now agile has different rules there's different rules in each company everybody thinks that things differently now what we need to look at is some of the companies have some portion that needs to go fast and that needs to be agile and then they start moving more and more people into that but with applying different rules so for this you definitely need to have the old operating system that is your hierarchical system and start slowly moving across from the network based system into a free network system where you can build this coalition where you can start getting leadership support that's what we call as a ems and eat within the scrum and scale framework so that's called the enterprise um, act uh, is called the executive action team and the executive meta scrum team now if you don't have leadership support it's going to be really difficult you need leaders to lead by example they need to have a vision that can that can then get converted that can get transformed into what the company needs to achieve that's key now just with the with the guiding coalition it's not sufficient you got to look at the culture look at what kind of a culture does a scrum and scale framework provide you now it talks about the values driven culture and it's the basis and the foundation are same scrum at scale aims to build a healthy organization culture through the pillars of the empirical process and scrum values now when we talk about empirical process it's to do with transparency inspection and adaptation so these are the main pillars and the values like openness courage focus respect and commitment now what we want to talk about is why do we why are we using the same foundation as scrum scrum at scale helps the organization by supporting a positive team learning environment this is very important if you want to become a, if you want to grow your organization if you want to have a positive learning environment your organization needs to be healthy it has to be sustainable yeah and become smarter when a healthy organization can become smarter only when you have a positive environment and that happens only through values driven culture these pillars and these foundations are enough for you to actually address most of the issues 99% of the issues in an organization in an organization so let's look at so if you look at uh, transparency without transparency you cannot inspect and without inspection you cannot adapt we want to continuously learn we want to understand how can we implement these pillars these values within our organization whether it's at the team level whether it's at the department level or whether it's at the enterprise level so we have to look at the core aspects of these things looking at the scrum at scale framework it talks about the scrum master cycle and the product owner cycle now if you look back to the basics of scrum you can see that there is a what and a how so what is the product 
and how is the process who manages the process the scrum master yeah and the team is responsible to deliver the increments yeah? they build the system they start working on it and the product owner side of it enables the vision they start giving you the vision they start giving you the product backup items now in scrum at scale you have a similar framework which is talking about the how and the what and it also helps in eliminating any wasteful organizational conflict that keeps the team from achieving its optimal capacity now the other thing you will remember is when an organization is ready to customize all these things their transformation strategy and implementation can be tweaked based on any of the components that is here so you could work on the ones that is actually causing problems for example if you're having problem with the continuous improvement within your area you can start working on those components you can start looking at a backlog prioritization if that's an issue within your area if there is if everything is becoming priority if everything is becoming a number one priority and it's becoming a place where you have no priorities so you may want to work on such areas now these components provide you the ability to assess and talk about the goals they talk about what are the, what are the good inputs and outputs that needs to be delivered within each area now the other thing i wanted to explain is is about the um the continuous improvement so when the scrum teams they focus on continuous improvement and removing impediments in order to do that what do they need they need to coordinate with each other now if the coordination is missing it's really difficult when you start scaling this happens even when when you start working on a single team and then you start expanding to uh, two or three teams cross team coordination is missing everybody's implemented scrum we know that and a lot of products a lot of services have have been built across in the last few years and every company has had more than one scrum team but the problems they face is the cross team coordination the communication overhead how do we overcome that how can you do that so you have to work together the thing is you talk about the, the continuous improvement and removing of impediments that's a bigger block if the impediments are not removed your team is blocked your team is stuck there it cannot move ahead and your product delivery gets delayed if your product delivery gets delayed you're not going to meet your customer needs and that's going to impact your market share it's going to impact your share prices it's going to impact your delivery cycle and you're going to be nowhere your competitor is going to take away everything so one of the major things when you start scaling, when you start building multiple teams, work on the cross team coordination, work on the communication area. That's important. And also getting continuous feedback on your product. That's one of the key things that we show here. Delivery and continuous feedback. Product feedback is essential, is important. And the earlier you get, is better for your product and for your area, for your team to continuously improve and work. And looking at a team, we know we have uh, from the Scrum Scrum Guide, we we want to have a few team members. We have a Scrum Master, we have a Product Owner, and that's a typical setup of a team. And that's what we do in any Scrum environment. We have a certain we have certain responsibilities that uh, the Scrum Master needs to perform. He needs to ensure the impediments are removed, protects the team from um, from interruptions, coaches the team. He acts as a coach as well. Scrum Master can be an agile coach as well. He coaches the team and the product owner and facilitates the Scrum, scrum events. Now, how do I scale this? How do I scale this team across? My first attempt would be to build a scalable reference model. And to build a scalable reference model, I start with a small set of teams, okay? small network of teams. And the reference model is nothing but a few, so maybe three, four teams that can deliver and increment every in every sprint. That's important. So they are nothing but a team of teams that deliver constantly and consistently. That's important. Now, as these teams, they successfully implement Scrum. So based on the Scrum guide, if they successfully implement Scrum, the rest of the organization has a functioning that needs to be done. Healthy example of Scrum to replicate. So these guys, this team becomes a healthy example. They become a prototype for scaling Scrum across the organization. It's 
pretty simple. Build the prototype, build the scalable reference model. And why do we start with the scalable reference model? Because one of the things is when you do a big, big bang transformation, you don't want all the teams, you don't want everybody to start working on different areas, different uh, start working on different problems and issues. Any deficiencies in deficiencies in Scrum implementation will be magnified when multiple teams are deployed. Now, what kind of problems will you achieve? What, what will this reference model start working on? They'll start working on organization policies, any problems, procedures, any development practices. They become an example. They start working on things that block the performance and frustrate the teams. And that's what we need. We want this reference model to start working as a prototype and building a great example for the organization. Now, this does not happen easily. You want the leadership team to support. And that's where we have the executive action team and the executive meta scrum team. So one of them owns the transformation backlog and the other one does the transformation strategy. They work together, they are formed as a team and they also try and build an agile ecosystem within the organization. Let's look at a quick setup of a team of teams or Scrum of Scrums. Now, most of you would have thought that Scrum of Scrums is an event, but it's not an event. Scrum of Scrums is a team. It's a team of teams, a network of teams. We call the event as Scale Daily Scrum, which, is, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. Now, in Scrum, the ideal state is for a Scrum team to be an independent path to production. So we want the team to release, that's important. It needs the members who have all the necessary skills to go from the ideation to implementation. The Scrum of Scrums is a team of teams that replicates this ideal at scale. And if you look at the framework, each team within the Scrum of Scrums must satisfy the team process improvement. That's what we're looking at. So every aspect of those components is satisfied within these team. Remember, this is not an event. Scrum of Scrums is not an event. It is a team of teams. Most organizations over the past few years have been using Scrum of Scrums as an event. They've been calling it as a stand-up. They've been doing that. But according to the Scrum and Scale Guide, according to what we understand from Scrum. Scrum of Scrums is a network of teams. STS is the Scaled Daily Scrum. That's the event. So in Scrum, we call it as Daily Scrum. In Scrum at Scale, it's Scale Daily Scrum. So all your events in Scrum at Scale Guide becomes an additional scaled event. For example, you have Scale daily scrum, you have a scale retrospective, you have a scale sprint planning, scale review. All this happens. Now, if you look at the structure here, you've got two teams, you've got two network of teams, and they communicate with each other and they deliver a product increment together. So we have the scrum of scrums of scrums. This is again a complete network of teams working together. Now, this enables cross-team coordination and it can be infinitely scalable. You can scale it to as many number of teams you want. The other thing you've got to remember is in a scale daily scrum, the teams, the scrum masters of each team, the scrum masters of each team, they start coordinating with each other as an event, just like a daily scrum. They, they discuss for about 15 minutes, they start talking about what are the impediments that's blocking them as a network of teams in achieving their goal. Just like how you have a sprint goal for a team, the network of teams also work towards a sprint goal. And they discuss what are the impediments that's blocking and what can we share and what are the continuous improvements we can start working on. Now, if we start expanding this, if you're working in larger organizations, if we start expanding this, we look at something like this, a 125 teams in five value streams. We've got different value streams. You've got the executive action team, who's a guiding coalition there. It helps in building the agile ecosystem for the entire organization. Now, what you can observe from this is, 
it's pure scrum at all layers and you've got different interfaces that can interact with all other areas of the network this will limit the communication pathways you don't want everybody to start talking to each other right you have interfaces that can talk and that can communicate and provide feedback talk about continuous improvements talk about uh, different things about strategies and everything now the eat also works with with a team that can help them to improve the quality of scrum within the organization so we call that as an agile practice team now with all this we want to go into a phase where we can achieve a sustainable agile operating system so we want the mindset of the managers to change and to become better leaders just like what spotify when sap did spotify's model is similar to scrum at scale the product owners set priorities the teams get self-managed you start self-managing and this will reduce the decision latency the project success rate will increase so you will have you want to go from a fragile state to a sustainable state this is what this is your goal this is the goal of scrum at scale a sustainable environment a sustainable operating system for your organization to help you in transforming from a hierarchical system into a network based system where we are not trying to eliminate all the managers we're trying to help them to become better leaders looking at other frameworks let's talk about a few of them safe now safe talks about guiding correlation it uses scrum as the basis calls it as agile teams and they also use kanban to manage the flow of work and all the other things happen like pi planning and you've got the incremental that takes the pi planning and then that happens eight to between eight and twelve weeks ideally people uh, a lot of organization i've seen have, have been using it for like 10 weeks so that's their kind of a pattern within the team level and as they go up it, 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 it expands they have more uh restraints they've got uh, it extends to the portfolio and then in in the in safe five we've got new areas that's been added like the organization agility and different things i don't want to go in detail but this is how the safe framework talks about the different layers different configurations they have you can talk about they have about they have about four configurations and if you look at the um the way you want to achieve or you want to implement safe you have to make sure that you reach a stage where you agree or it works in the idea we call that as a, a, a tipping point. So before you can take a product like Safe and start using it, you have to understand if that, if that product actually is suitable, you have to get trained, you have to work on it and see if it actually works within your environment and then into implementing it. You'll have to start training your leaders, your, your teams, and then start building, a, getting, getting a leadership team to start working on it. And there's different areas that goes on. Now, looking at Nexus, Nexus is again an extension of Scrum, where you have multiple Scrum teams that works together, but there's a limitation. It applies only to three and nine teams. You can't go beyond nine teams. And uh, all the events and everything is prefixed with Nexus. So you call it a Nexus print planning, Nexus daily Scrum. So you've got all this in place. Um, the fundamentals are similar to Scrum, but it's, uh, yeah, again, there's a limitation. You can't expand, you can't go beyond a, a, a few teams. What about less? Less is, again, Scrum. So if you look at all these frameworks, they all use Scrum. The basis and the foundation is Scrum. It talks about the principles, the purpose, the elements of uh, Scrum, but in a large scale context. It consists of cross-functional teams. Um, you can have three to nine people in a team working together. But the only only area you you would that deviates from what the Scrum Guide tells you is one Scrum master can serve about one to three teams. The Scrum Guide tells you you need to have a Scrum team with a Scrum master and a product owner. So in this framework, there's a flexibility, 
uh, it depends if it works in your area or if it, if it helps you it, it depends on how you want to implement it uh, but that's that's one area of of uh, it, where, where it goes it, it deviates from the scrum guide the other framework is called the disciplined agile delivery it focuses on people it's a hybrid kind of a meta framework now this is again a non-prescriptive framework, similar to, um, to Scrum at Scale, it's not prescriptive, but when you look at SAFE, it's highly prescriptive. You have to have certain roles and responsibilities and certain areas. Now in large organizations, if you implement SAFE, you can just take SAFE product and then implement that across into, your, into a very large organization, covering from the enterprise portfolio and, uh, and, and do it at the, uh, at the team level. Now with this, with discipline agile delivery, the focus will be is more on architecture and design. And they want to build a better product. They want to scale across. And they have a few cycles, life cycles that take space. So some of them are like Agile Basics, Lean, and uh, talks about continuous delivery, and also about exploratory Lean Startup. Now, all these things, most of, these, most of the scaling frameworks have similar features. They almost use similar things. But if you look at the uh, volume, and look at the capacity and look at the kind of uh, market share. SAFE has been there for like uh, 20, about 30 percentage of companies use that. And then you've got Scrum at scale about 19 percentage and all the others fall into a bracket of less than 10 percent. But overall, if you, if you see the basis and the foundation is Scrum. This is a typical question I get in most of my uh, classes. Why and when did Scrum at scale start? Now Scrum at scale Prototype was done in 1983. This was the first prototype done, and this is way beyond when Scrum really started. This is when Dr. Jeff Sutherland, he worked on a, on a business unit for a bank, and everybody from sales, marketing, support, they all worked together. They built a network of teams. That's the foundation. That is the physical foundation of any framework, and that was implemented in 1983 way back before all these frameworks came in before safe before uh, nexus before less or uh, discipline agile delivery and what 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 do they do then they put a few num few teams into a network they started working like a startup and they had a sprint planning they started working for about a week and uh, they had the planning on monday and delivery was happening on a friday Fast cycle, a one week cycle was, 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 was what they were implemented. Now, what did they get out of this? This unit was the most loss making unit. It started with a cost exceeding revenue by 30%. Within six months, they got a profit of 30%. It's about a 60% swing in the margin. Look at this, look at the value, look at the growth rate what's common scale provided at that point of time. And if you can see a lot of companies after that, like individual, IDX, Fidelity, a lot of companies started implementing the architecture of Scrum at scale. And one of them is Spotify. Spotify's approach to scaling Scrum is what is defined in Scrum at scale. You can have a look at Spotify's case study uh, in the Scrum at scale website. It's, uh, there's a video where Hendrik Nybal talks about how the key patterns of Scrum at Scale framework helped in transforming the engineering culture at Spotify. And everybody knows here about Spotify's culture and also the growth rate and how soon they actually scaled and what was their profit share in the music industry. Everybody knows about that. And I've seen a lot of companies copying this framework and started to implement this, mainly banks. They're into hundreds of squads. They all use Spotify framework. They're trying to implement this, they're trying to copy the same framework. Only difference what Spotify did was they didn't want to call it a Scrum team. They wanted to name it differently. It's fine. You can name it any. The, the fundamentals was different. The fundamentals was, was the basis was Scrum. But the naming conventions were different. They called strategy days for executive meta Scrum. What we call in Scrum at scale. They, they didn't want to have the name Scrum master. They said we'll call them agile coaches. It's fine. And they also had the executive action team, the leadership support team. Who was helping them to align to talk about the transformation what was happening within this area now 
they also had the product owners, the chapter leads, the agile coaches, everybody forming this action team, forming this executive action team. And they were working towards the high impact problems. That was impediments. All impediments, how, how these can be resolved. So that's the whole structure of Spotify. If you look at the components, similar to Scrum at scale, we have a team, we have a product owner, and we've got an agile coach. Now, looking at all these frameworks, why should I use Scrum at scale? It talks about the challenges. So you have the biggest challenge when you scale or when you try to introduce Scrum, it's a culture. Now, Scrum at scale's culture is a value driven culture and it helps you to transform your organization's culture to make you work things and also gives you some of the recipes how you can get the organization to work on this in a, in a better way. The only resistance. It can help you to build an agile ecosystem. And because it is scale free, the organization is not constrained, allowing you to grow organically as the market changes. That's what we need. The economic changes that happens in the market, the situation that takes place, we need to adapt to it. And you want to have a scale free architecture that can help you to, to do that. Scrum at scale uses Scrum and Lean principles. Scrum uses the basis foundation of Scrum. It talks about the Lean principles. It's the, the Lean print. Lean is all about removing impediments. It's all about removing the wasteful things, right? So this is what you need across your organization. You can apply this across software, hardware, services, operations, in call centers. You can implement Scrum anywhere and you can scale this across. If you have implemented Scrum, Scrum in two or three teams, you are in some way or the other using Scrum at scale. Now, if you look at the uh, look at some of the companies that use Scrum at scale, you've got Toyota, you've got um, Spotify, you've got G. IDX is the was the first company to use Scrum at scale, and later they were called as G Healthcare. Infosys is one of the platinum partners for Scrum at scale. There are loads of case studies on the Scrum at scale website. You can start reading them. You can see the success stories. Look at 3M's uh, case study, they're pretty interesting. All this will drive your company's evaluation. It will talk about your higher market share. It's going to um, build and it's going, you're going to do, you, you can develop a quality product. And that's, that's the goal, right? That's the typical goal for any organization. We want to build a higher quality product and get our company into a better state. This book is highly recommended if you want to learn about the basis of Scrum. You want to talk about a few things. This is very good. Um, so Scrum at scale is designed to scale productivity to get an entire organization delivery twice the value at half the cost. Now, if you have Scrum that's implemented properly, it's done well in your organization, then Scrum at scale is going to be an easy operating system for you to implement. Your fundamentals and the basis of the foundation has to be really strong. Now, if you want to learn more about Scrum at Scale, I'm doing a lot of online courses. Uh, my classes run for different time zones. This is my environment. So I do a lot of uh, diagrams. We've got virtual learning. We've got uh, uh, visual areas, uh, high quality slides. And I also use a lot of collaborative tools like Mureva, similar to Mural, where we have collaborative games happening. Um, so get in touch with Knowledge Hut. Uh, we've got uh, classes scheduled for uh, for the entire June and July. Um, so yeah, and 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 there's a lot of review comments provided. 